From local news reporter to co-anchor of Access Hollywood, Detroit native Sean Robinson has brought elegance and class to entertainment journalism. More than a broadcast journalist, Sean is a role model, author, and activist. Sean Robinson, on this episode of Leading Women. Sean is fierce. She is honest, and she is accessible. Sean is loyal. Sean is beautiful, inside and out. Sean is debonair. And Sean is cool. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and I remember my childhood being one of feeling very comfortable, kind of in my own world. I would watch. TV a lot, and there was a woman named Beverly Payne who was one of the first African-American women on television as a news anchor in Detroit. And I was thinking, one day, I'm going to do that. She always had an unusual amount of energy for a child of her age. I went to Spelman College in Atlanta, an all-women's school, African-American women. When you go to an all-women's college, you know that women can do anything in the world. It instilled in me a sense of um, sisterhood. They had so many uh, wonderful role models that came through the college. Uh, Maya Angelou came through, Jesse Jackson came through to speak to the kids. After I graduated from Spelman, I went back home to Detroit and I actually interned at this particular television station. In addition to interning, I needed some money, so I registered with a temporary agency and I got like secretarial work. And then finally, they hired me part-time at this particular television station. And so I was reporting and I was anchoring. She worked as a reporter and then anchor there at the, job, at the station. And then um, began working, they, they started a talk show. Uh, strictly speaking. Oh my gosh, we've been have all different types of guests on the show. I had uh, Mayor Coleman Young, which was a biggie. That was a huge one. There have been journalists who have said that the mayor doesn't like for us to ask tough questions. But that is and not true. Come on with your tough questions. She's a journalist. You know, journalists like to talk about everything. She likes to kind of mix it up and talk about life and relationships and you know, community. After I left Detroit, I went to Flint, Michigan. I was an anchor and reporter at an affiliate there in Flint, Michigan. And after three months, my news director fired me because he said I would not make it in TV. She had a few people and, you know, bosses and positions that were telling her, mm, this may be, you're maybe not really made to be in front of a camera. And she never let that um, deter her. When my news director told me I would never make it in TV, it did not discourage me. It lit a fire under me. And by the time my two weeks were over, I'd gotten a job in Milwaukee. And I will never forget telling him, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, guess what? I've got a new job. And I remember he went, oh, you did? and it's in a bigger market, really. And I got this new job in Milwaukee. I was a medical reporter and I hosted another talk show and I was also weekend anchor. And welcome to Milwaukee's Talking. I'm Sean Robinson. Don't you just love spring cleaning? Not. She happened to be the type of person that people could talk to and tell not only their physical, but personal and emotional problems. When I was in Milwaukee, I left the job in Milwaukee to get married. Because I was thinking, okay, I need to be there for my husband, I need to be there for him. So I reluctantly left that job and moved to Texas. And then after about a year, the marriage fell apart and I had to move back home with my with my mom. I was in my old bedroom and I was really beating myself up, kicking myself, thinking what an idiot I was. What a mistake I made. I had like a pity party for about maybe a 
few weeks. A few weeks. Let me stretch it to a month and a half. I had a pity party. She reached back to the philosophy and rules and teachings of her parents and grandparents. One thing my father told me is that a setback is a setup for a comeback. She was very determined to, uh, to carve out a position in, uh, in broadcast journalism, and whether it was in Detroit or wherever her path was going to lead. I went to a number of production companies and I said, look, I will do voiceover work for you and I will do on-camera work for you if you allow me to use that material, edit my tape here, and send out resumes. And after that, I was able to get a new resume tape and then got a job in Miami as, a, as the morning and noon anchor. Even though I, I loved being there, I wanted bigger things. I, I wanted to be on a national entertainment show. So when the opportunity came for me to try out for Access Hollywood, I was just like beside myself. I was like, oh my gosh. So they flew me out to LA. I was in the studio about to audition and the director gave me some copy to read. I was really overwhelmed and I froze for a minute and I couldn't read the copy and the director was like, okay. And I was like, and some kind of way, I got it out. I got it out, I read the copy, and they were like, okay, thank you, nothing, no, oh, that's great, nothing. So I got back on the plane, I just started, I was like, my eyes were welling up with tears. I was like, I blew it, I blew it. This was my one chance to get on a national show, and I just totally blew it. I remember her calling me, and I was like, so, how'd it go, how'd it go? And she sounded completely deflated, and I was like, what's, you know, what's, what's the problem? What's wrong? She's like, oh. I just, she said, I, it was terrible. I wrote down all this list of things about what's great about staying in Miami and not living in LA. And then a week later, they called me and said, I got the job. And finally, I mean, my dream had come true. This was my dream. This was my dream job. This was, you know, the, the, the perfect venue for her. And I knew that she was going to sink her teeth into it. And I knew that she was going to excel. I have covered every single event in Hollywood that there is to cover. I've covered the Oscars, the Emmys, the Golden Globes, the Grammys, the, the People's Choice, everything. I'm Sean Robinson backstage at the SAG Awards where there are a whole lot of mad men and I'll tell you why. If there's a red carpet and there's fabulous people there, Sean is there. Sean is great because I think she seems very genuine on air. Um, she seems very strong, very confident, asks great questions. She's a good listener too. Sean may be reporting on quote unquote celebrity news, but she is a journalist. I mean, she digs deep for the story. She's a real journalist and she actually does her due, due diligence. And uh, I know I appreciate it. I know, you know, people in my community and the Hollywood community definitely appreciate that. She's gonna be fair in her interviews. And I love that about her. She's gonna give you an equal opportunity to say what you need to say to your public. As far as what Sean has brought to Access Hollywood, I mean, the things are endless. I mean, she's brought her great journalistic skill. She has brought class, a lot of energy, a lot of humor. I mean, there's nobody that could tell a story better than Sean can. What's Sean's value on Access Hollywood? And as a black actress, she brings black people, which is great because otherwise, I think, you know, we tend to get forgotten, you know, like outside of Will and Denzel and Hallie, you know, she recognizes that there's so, there's so much talent in our community that a lot of other journalists sort of skip across. I remember growing up and I spent many days at my grandmother's house because my school was close to her home. I went to Catholic school. And I remember going downstairs in the basement. I had my little Barbie Dow house set up and I had my little, uh, her little convertible car. Everything she did, she did with exuberance, I should say. She used to roller skate, she used to uh, ride bikes. One of my favorite childhood memories um, was when my mom would throw me these big 
birthday parties. There's something about the celebration of birthdays I really loved, and that kind of like seared in my, in my mind. The secret to it is taking lots of pictures. So then after the day passes, then you can go back and look at all the pictures and then you remember, you can remember it all over again. I went to Cass Tech High School. You have a lot of famous people who went to Cass Tech High School. Um, Dinah Ross, Lily Tomlin, designer Tracy Reese, and folks would always come up to me, they said, where'd you go to school, Cass Tech? I'm like, yes, yeah, right. don't be hating because you didn't get in. She uh, always did very good in school. She was. Uh, very conscious about her work. My mother and father still live in Detroit. Now, they got divorced when I was six years old. However, they live down the street from each other, on the same street, and they go to breakfast with each other about three times a week. We never had problems in terms of, uh, you know, the children or, or ourselves. In fact, we presently are, are, are very good friends. It was normal for us, so it's always odd to me when somebody says, oh, I hate my ex, because my family was never like that. The fact that there was a divorce in the family did not in any way interrupt the bonding and love that was expressed between us. I'm very, very thankful that I came from a family with really, um, with really strong African-American women. And I'm glad my strong mama picked a strong black man to my dad. She's a very wonderful, caring, and sensitive daughter. She is um, everything that a mother could ask for. She's a, a, not only a mentor, um, a role model, but definitely a pioneer for, for every young person of color, certainly young women of color. I'm so glad that my family made us go to church because it was so important, that spiritual foundation was so extremely important. And I remember my grandmother used to always say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Just out the blue, just thank you, Jesus. And I remember that. And whenever, you know, I start to get kind of ungrateful about things, I just say, just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. She went to Sunday school here, she went to church here. Uh, her mother went to church here, and if she did it, and look at her, you can do it too. There's no excuse. And so I think that's the hook that we want to connect our young people to. She's already, you know, um, jumped over a lot of hurdles and actually opened up and created brand new doors for other young women journalists and other black women to, uh, get into a field that they you just not too long ago were not accepted in. I can imagine that the community looks at Sean Robinson with a great deal of pride. Anybody that comes out of a small town and reaches a certain level of success, it makes the next girl from your high school and the next guy from your high school feel like, wow, I should try for my dream and you know I'm gonna give it a shot. So many girls who come up to me and ask me about the stars that I meet. Are they as perfect as they look on TV, the magazines, in movies? And I wanted to use my access, pardon the pun, to talk to women who these girls look up to and they admire and ask them, you know, is, is your life perfect? Have you ever struggled with self-esteem before? And so many women answered that call and as a result, we have this beautiful book called Exactly As I Am, inspirational messages from, from women to girls about believing in yourself and dreaming big and not letting anyone tell you that you can't accomplish something. I think it's very important with somebody of her stature to come out to write this book that she's done about girls and self-esteem to believing in who you are the way that you are exactly as I am. She heard the hurt in so many young people. 
um, not feeling that they were pretty enough, not feeling that they were thin enough, not feeling that they were good enough in any kind in different ways. It's loving yourself just like you are and knowing that because, as Oprah Winfrey was saying, because you were born, you have a right to be here. I think young women need honest voices. I think we like to, to you know, get on our soapbox and it was like, you know, if you just study hard and stay in school, everything's gonna be okay. And that's not really realistic for today's young people. And Shauna addressed each and everything that these young women are, are faced with. And she did it honestly and realistically. Miss Oprah Winfrey, Helen Mirren, Sharon Stone, Jennifer Hudson, Alicia Keys, Celine Dion. When I looked at the finished list, I went, whoa, my goodness, we got some good stuff here. These are powerful women, women who are very strong, and there's so many more that I can mention. But they, each of them, they, they tell stories about growing up and, and having self-esteem challenges themselves, and also what they do to overcome that. Like Jennifer Hudson talks about conquering stage fright. Who knew that she was afraid to go and sing before all these people? I'm very happy that Sean has taken what she has digested for so many years and has given back and is investing not only in herself, but in other young women. I sit on the board of Girls Inc., the organization that inspires all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. A lot of the girls who are part of Girls Inc. are the first ones to go to college. They're, first, they're the first ones in their family to really have a future that is bright. She particularly has a soft spark, spot for um, adolescent uh, girls. I've also been the spokesperson of the Los Angeles County Share Your Heart, Share Your Home program, which encourages um, families to find homes for children, mostly African American children who are in the foster care system. And we have these, it, it's, it's like so emotional, I could barely talk about it, but the true heroes, I think, are the foster parents and the adopted parents that come in and they take children who nobody else wants. And, and try to help them live a life of, of value and respect and, and importance. I think all of these charitable institutions that she devotes her time, resources uh, to, is an indication of the type of person that she basically is. She gives so much of herself, her heart, her soul, um, and her time to causes that mean something to her. I hope that the work that I do is meaningful, and I hope that um, you know that I'm able to give something to a young girl that will enhance her life in some way. I think my biggest challenge, the one that I, I still struggle with, and, and one of the things that Diane Sawyer says is that building self-esteem is a lifelong battle because we all struggle with it. But my biggest challenge is not enjoying the power of now. I just have to be, you know, get back to my grandma and say, thank you, Lord, for this moment. Thank you for what's happening right now. I think she's an excellent role model for young women. Um, I think that she uh, has, she, she's very conscious of how she carries herself. I admire the way that she is still humble and grounded to reality. And that groundedness helps to continue her to be an inspiration to everyday people. One of Sean's greatest accomplishments is that she's still Sean Robinson. And when I see her on the air, I still see the Sean that I knew here in Detroit. What do we have on TV right now that's mainstream? You have Sean, you have Oprah. The future, you know, holds no bounds for her. She's she's a shooting star and, and um, such a, a source of inspiration and pride in our community. And like I said, you can see her 
every day. When I look at her and I see how uh, she's performed over the years and the fact that she's now moved from uh, anchoring and, and articulating to writing, uh, who knows, it could be producing, acting, uh, the sky is the limit. Most importantly, and I talk to her about this all the time, I think, you know, family is extremely important, so, you know, hoping that in her future she will, uh, she will, you know, always have the strength of a great family around her. So what does it mean to me to be a real life diva? Well, a woman who loves to help other women and who is uh, passionate about inspiring the lives of other women and, and young girls. So I think, um, I, thought, I think that's what a, a real life diva is. You know what star I absolutely hate talking to? My worst experience in the entire world? You know who that is? I forgot the name. You know People ask me that question all the time and I will never tell. I will never ever tell. Because you know what? It's not polite.